Hello and welcome to Pen Tester Academy. My name is Rick Farina and today we will be doing an evil twin attack against WPA Enterprise using mana. As usual, please start at pentesteracademy.com and click on member access. From here, access attack defense labs. Scroll down along the left hand side to where you will find Wi Fi attack defense and honeypots. Today is WPA Enterprise using mana. Please select the server closest to you, in my case that's US East, and hit run. Today we have two dual band interfaces that are available on our lab machine, and there is a Wi-Fi network present in the vicinity, and a client is connected to it. Our goal is to disconnect the client from this network, connect them to our network, and get their credentials. So let's see how that goes. As usual, I like to start off with Airmon NG, see what Wi Fi interfaces we have. And if that doesn't work, we also have IW Dev. Here we do have two Wi Fi cards. So let's take the first one, put it into monitor mode, see what's going on. IP link set WLAN 0 down. IW Dev WLAN 0 set type monitor. And then IP link set WLAN 0 up. Okay, arrow dump ng, make sure you use band abg and wlan0. This will scan all the different bands, not just 2.4 gigahertz, which is the default. And let's see what we have available to us. We do have a Wi-Fi network. It is on channel 6. And let's go ahead and cancel this and lock to that channel. Lock into that channel will give us the chance to see everything that's going on a little more clearly. Make sure we don't miss any packets, especially from the client device. But now we are locked on channel 6 and we're getting a whole lot of beacon frames and right away there is our client. So that's perfect. We've got what we need. Let's grab that ESS ID and we will go ahead and open up a new window and start working on our mana config. Open up a new window and let's take a look and make sure that we've got everything we need. We have a folder full of certs. And yes, indeed, it is quite full of certs. That's wonderful. So we should have everything that we need to fish this client. So let's go ahead and start this up. And we will do a mana.conf file. Okay, so we'll start off interface equals WLAN 1. We're already using WLAN 0 for monitor mode. And we'll do SSID equals Tiger Securities. That's copy and pasted straight from error dumps. So we make sure we don't have any typos or any capitalization errors. Then we go through and add your basic stuff. Hardware mode is G and channel. Uh, this can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, for the simplicity of having two interfaces, I'm going to keep this on channel six so that we can both monitor the real network and our network from one Wi Fi card a little more easily. Uh, if you're matching the BSS ID, the MAC address of the access point, it's really important that you pick a different channel because otherwise the two kind of fight a lot. Uh, but if you're not matching the, the MAC address, it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, so auth algs equals three, WPA equals three. Remember, this is a bit field, not defining WPA three. WPA key management equals WPA EAP. WPA pairwise equals TKIP and CCMP. IEEE 8021X is enabled. And the internal EAP server is enabled with EAP server equals one. I'm gonna set up a EAP user file to authenticate our users with. And we're gonna call that host APD EAP user. Uh, then we're gonna put in our certificates, uh, CA cert, root certs ca.pem and then we've got server cert root certs server.pem private key is root certs server.key and dh file is root certs dhparam.pem. Uh, from there we're going to go into our mana options. 
So mana's got a number of functions over and above what host APD has. And the first one, most important, is to actually turn on mana WPE. This is turning on the basic man in the middle for the credentials. If you don't turn this on, it won't do that. So you really want that. You want us to drop the credentials onto the, the command line here. And so we'll start that up. We'll do mana eep success equals one. This means after the user tries to authenticate, send back a success. Pass, fail, doesn't matter. The answer is always yes when you connect to my access point. Mana cred out equals host apd dot creds. What this does is it actually drops just the credentials to a separate log file. So it's going to scroll all the information, including the authentication types and the credentials or the hashes right onto the main command. Uh, like after you run this, it'll be in the, the standard out scroll. But going through that, especially in a busy environment, is quite painful. So dropping it to a separate file is highly recommended. Now that we've got this one done, we will open up our next file. So vim hostapd.eep user. And from here, we're going to add in star for all users. Any users allowed to connect, and they're allowed to use peep, ttls, tls, md5, gtc. I don't think this objective actually stated what you're supposed to find the client using. Uh, so we're just going to set up kind of everything. This is usually the best setup anyway. Just kind of allow everything and let the client and the server sort it out. So setting up first mode and then tunneled mode. Got MS chat v2, MD5, GTC, TTLS, PAP, TTLS, chap, TTLS. MS chap. Uh, I know this looks like a lot to type, but it's more or less copied right from the config files for host APD, the example config files. This is just setting up a good set of sane defaults that more or less allows the user to connect with whatever they want. Uh, you can also make a smaller version of this file with just the simpler ones, uh, things like GTC or MD5, things that either pass in plain text or pass a very weak hash to allow you to try to crack that hash quicker. Uh, this one will allow pretty much anything, and we'll see how it goes for us. Okay, now we've got config files in place. If everything is right, we can just run host apd mana right now. And ap enabled means we did it right, so let's hang out here and take a look. Okay, we do have WPA2, CCMP, management, everything looks good. Here's the client though, and you can see its MAC address, and it is still connected to the original access point. Is more or less what you expect, right? You see they both have the same power. They're both there. There's no real reason for the client to connect to me over the original access point. Now, if I could be closer to the client, maybe have a little bit higher signal strength, something like that, that would probably help the client to just decide to connect to me instead. But since we don't have the ability to move around in our lab environment right now, and I'm really not the most patient person, let's go ahead and open another window. And let's see how error dump, uh, error replay can help us. So we'll do error replay. And error replay has a lot of options. The replay options are the most important for what we're doing. We need a BSSID, that's the MAC address for the access point. And then we need to specify an attack. In this case, it's going to be dauth. So let's go ahead and error replay dauth. dauth takes one flag, and that is count. We're going to send one. And then A, I'm going to go back to our arrow dump window and find the BSSID of the original AP. I'm going to try to send a deauthenticate or your authentication is no longer valid message. And instead of just sending it to everybody, let's be a tiny bit stealthier. We're going to send it just to this one station. Now, one thing that's really important to note is if you don't specify a client, it's going to send a broadcast deauth. Uh, those are not very likely in the wild. You just don't see that very often. So sending to specific clients not only helps to attack just one target, it's also a lot more stealthy. Uh, go ahead and add WLAN 0 in here. That's our interface in monitor mode. It's already on the right channel because we're sniffing. And let's send one D off. Okay. That's fine. We can simply ignore negative 1. It can't tell what channel it's on for some reason. That's not a big deal. We can just go ahead and ignore that. 
And here we go. It did find the SSID on that channel, found the BSSID, and it sent 64 deauths. I think it's really important to note we asked for one, and it sent 64. So again, the attack is not necessarily that stealthy, but still a lot more stealthy than sending 64 broadcast deauths. Let's see if it worked. Indeed it did. 64 deauthenticate frames later, the client is now connected to us. And if we go back here, we can see EEP identity phase zero Anon, EEP identity phase one Brian, EEP TTLS password authentication protocol, Brian Sweetness. There we got the username and the password in plain text. Uh, you don't get this if you just sniff the air. I wanna be really clear about that. Uh, TTLS is tunneled TLS. That is an SSL protocol. And this is password authentication protocol, which basically means inside of that TLS tunnel, you're gonna get a plain text username and authentication. So you have to be doing man in the middle to capture this, but it is just sent to you in plain text. So super convenient. We'll go here and verify our flags. What is the username? That'll be Brian. Copy and pasting the password is sweetness. And there you go. So remember, if you didn't test it yourself, it doesn't work. And I will see you next time. Thank you.